to another week with Miss Jessie. Um, we're going over sticking it out and determination for the month of May. So it's another week of sticking it out um, with this quarantine and everything going on. And it's also another week of sticking it out, learning about how God helps us do that. Okay. How God helps us stick it out, but also how he helps us get unstuck. Um, I was reading and I found this um, verse in Psalms. And I'm going to read it from here exactly because I want, I love these words. I think they're so great. This is Psalm verse 100, verse chapter 100, sorry, verse 1 through 3. It says, shout for joy to the Lord. Everyone on earth, worship the Lord with gladness. Come to him with songs of joy. So that is so awesome. This was in our packet for teaching you guys. But I love that that verse was sitting there for me to share with you guys because I have a song of joy. I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. It's not that joyful. Well, I'm that joyful, but I don't want to ruin the joy for everybody. But my song of joy is thank you for your prayers last week. Thank you so much for anybody who prayed for me. I was having kind of a bummer of a week, but I'm doing a lot better this week. Um, and I wanted to share that I feel much more cheerful and um, I'm really excited to see what the rest of the spring and the summer are going to bring for us. So today I have a story, um, an activity, and then a couple surprises. So let's go hear a little story from the Bible. Okay, so like I said, this month we're talking about unstuck. How to get unstuck. Don't give up. If we had to sum it up in three words, that's, that is what it would be. Don't give up. We do that with our determination, deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. It's worth it, you guys. Finish it. You start it, you finish it. And particularly this week, we have a Bible story um, about somebody in the Bible who kept going. He kept going because God, he knew that God knew the end of the story. So you keep going. Because God knows the end of the story. When things are tough, when they're annoying, when they're frustrating. Oh gosh, sometimes it's so hard to keep going. But you should. God knows the end of the story. And it's going to be good. So, we are talking about... Do you guys remember where we were? We went through um, the story of... We went through some of Jesus' life. And we talked about some of the amazing things that he did while he was walking around um, gathering his followers. Then we talked about um, when he was betrayed in the garden. And then we talked about him dying on the cross for our sins. And the end, right? No, that wasn't the end. That was not the end. That was far from the end. After um, he died, he was raised from the cross. And he came back and he walked amongst us again. And he instructed his followers to go and make tons and tons of disciples everywhere, okay? So in our Bible, um, I think it's useful. This helps Miss Jessie to kind of wrap my mind around why it's so important to follow Jesus and live like him and what it all means. It helps me um, kind of put the pieces together, okay? So I've showed you guys this before, but, you know, we have the Old Testament, which is before Jesus, right? And... It's pretty big there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of people who read that and followed that before Jesus came right and that is all about the world leading up to Jesus's birth okay all right so here I have it separated Old Testament on this side New Testament on this side this is all about Jesus's family before he was born his grandfather, great grandfather, great 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 great, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Okay, all of this is about what Jesus is going to do. What is he going to do? Do you guys remember ultimately why Jesus came to this earth? Because he wanted to live like us. He wanted to um, be a man like us, and he wanted to clean our sins. Only somebody perfect could clean our sins, and he was that person. Um, so that is what Matthew, Mark. Luke and John, those are the Gospels. That is what that's about, his life and him living perfect. And then his, um, the betrayal and then his death and then him rising from the grave um, to help uh, give people, I guess, more instructions. So now, that was a review. I know, we already listened a lot. 
of Miss Jessie talking, but now we're in Acts. A-C-T-S, Acts. The book of Acts, which describe the Acts of the disciples, okay? And we talk, we've done a lot of stories, but this week we're gonna talk about some of the disciples. Um, where were they? Probably Jerusalem. Not sure. I'll double. They were in Jerusalem. So we have these disciples who are trying really hard to do what they need to do to um, follow Jesus' instructions and be faithful men of God, okay? And sometimes they didn't always have exactly what they needed, but they had people who helped them get what they needed. So stuff like food, clothing, maybe somewhere to sleep. So here I have some cans of food, okay? Because I'm gonna give you something what you need. One of these men's, let's, men's, men, his name was, let's spell it out. S. T. No. Find that one. That one, this one. E. What's his name? Step. That's a weird name, Step. Oh, I'm just kidding. We have more. H. E. N. S Stephen. 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 His name is Stephen. Um, okay. So today I'm going to tell you a story about Stephen. You ready? This is real quick in the book of Acts. This is basically, basically um, chapter six and chapter seven. So let's go over it, okay? So back at the Pentecost, do you guys remember that? When Jesus, well, when the Holy Spirit came and gave um, people the ability to speak in, in different languages. And then after that, they were able to go and talk to many people. And then all of a sudden there was all of these followers, right? There was a lot of people who needed a lot of things. Well, they made a plan to have seven people, there's seven, um, kind of be in charge of helping out and making sure that people had what they needed, like food. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's just a fun coincidence. Um, and like I said, one of these men, their name was Stephen, and that's who we're going to talk about today. So, if you had to guess, if there was a man, a very special man, who was chosen seven out of maybe 5,000 men, um, and we're talking about him today, do you think... What kind of guy do you think Steven is? Do you think he's a good guy, like a hero, or a bad guy, like a villain? Hmm. Well, if he was chosen specially by Jesus's like direct followers, he's probably a pretty good guy. So, here we go. This is our first can, and this is our first picture can. We are talking about Steven, and he was a really good guy. He was like, he wasn't a superhero. I don't think he had a cape. But he had a lot of grace and wisdom, and he was very kind and very nurturing. So Stephen was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was helping the people out with their needs, and he was also teaching them about Jesus. Now, if you remember, people around that time and place weren't super big fans of Jesus, especially the old religious leaders, right? So what do you think happened when they heard Stephen talking about Jesus and his miracles and how he changed the whole world? You think they were pretty happy? Mm, they weren't. They weren't very happy at all. And in fact, they did something really sneaky. They convinced a couple men um, around town to make up lies about Stephen and tell them so that he could be in big, big trouble. Lies about God. He said that they spoke badly about Moses, you know, back from the Old, old Testament, right? Um, they, they basically told all these lies about Stephen, um, which weren't true. And then guess what happened? Oh. He was jailed. Poor Stephen. Our buddy Stephen was jailed um, for something that he didn't even do. How would you feel if somebody made up lies about you purposely to get you in trouble? Have you ever gotten in trouble for something that you didn't do before? Was it maybe an accident or a misunderstanding? Imagine if it was on purpose and a plan. 
And then imagine that while you were in trouble, you literally could not do the most important thing in the world. Something that God himself, the disciples of God, told you to do to take care of. Oh, I'd be pretty mad. I'd be pretty frustrated. I would be so mad that I would pick this can up and I would throw it through the window. I'm not going to today though. It's really tempting. I know it gets a little crazy in here and I'm a little dramatic. I kind of feel like I'm letting you guys down by not throwing that can, but I'm not going to. And here's why. Steven was not freaking out. He was not being angry and mad and throwing things. He was at peace. What? What? He was at peace. And in fact, I'm going to read this directly from our Bible. My Bible. I'll share it with you if you want to read it with me. But this is Acts chapter 6, verse 15, okay? All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin, that's like a table full of the important people. Let's just imagine that. Looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Oh, he was so... Stephen, the hero of our story, who was in jail, was so at peace with this whole crazy situation that he had the face of an angel. Oh my goodness. Let's keep reading. Okay, so the religious leaders were looking at our buddy Stephen. Stephen, you know, the hero of our story right now. He was in jail because people made up lies about him, but somehow he was at peace with it. And he was so at peace that he had like the face of an angel. Religious leader looked at this face of an angel guy and they were like, hey bro, is this true what they're saying? That you're saying these horrible things? And Stephen was not, he did not do what I would have done. Me personally, I would have had a really, really hard time um, just saying whatever they wanted to hear so I could get out. Especially because I knew I had a mission that I was supposed to be helping people find Jesus. And it Seems like it would have been a little bit difficult in that jail cell. But Stephen, he wanted people to know the truth. He knew he was here on earth to speak God's truth. So he went all the way back to the beginning. Like I said, we can split our Bible into Old Testament and New Testament. Um, and the Old Testament is what these people, the Sanhedrin, were pros at. They knew these words very well, backwards and forwards. They took quizzes every day on it. Um, if I said, hey, tell me, you know, if I said, tell me your favorite proverb and the one before and after, they probably could. They're really good. So he um, decided to tell them, you know, about, let's see, we had Father Abraham, and then we had Isaac, and then Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had, Jacob had a lot of sons. What? Jacob wants me to know that Jacob in the Bible had 12 sons, which I was going to say. <laughs> um, and one of them was Joseph. And do you guys remember the story of Joseph? How he, his brothers weren't very kind to him and he ended up going off to Egypt to being sold into slavery in Egypt. Now that's confusing, right? Because they're in Jerusalem, which is like, you know, east of Egypt. So why are we... In Egypt right now talking about it well if you remember there was a very special guy who spoke to um, spoke to him God spoke to him through a burning bush and did some other pretty amazing things like get people out of Egypt who is that guy Moses yeah and then he told them about David um, and the temple that he uh, he built because he loved God so many things right but the most amazing thing was Jesus. So he made sure to tell them the details about Jesus, about how he died on the cross, about how he rose again, and how the story keeps going. Didn't end with Moses, didn't end with David, and it's not going to end with Jesus, although it was a very important part and a very amazing part. So he was sure to tell these religious leaders, hey, this guy came and he was perfect. He was the son of God died on the cross and he rose again because God wanted him to. And now we are all here to say how amazing Jesus is, 
how amazing God is. We want people to live a life that is so holy and beautiful for him. So as Stephen was telling the religious leaders about Jesus, and remember, these were the same guys who did not like the story of Jesus. They still don't particularly like it. Stephen said this. This is from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 51 through 52. I'm going to read it from over here. So if you see me going like this way, okay? Um, <clears throat> this says, you stubborn people, you won't obey. You won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. You always oppose the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? They even killed those who told about the coming of the blameless one. And now you have handed him over to his enemies. You have murdered him. Ah, yikers. That was a lot of words, huh? What if somebody said that to you? What if somebody said, you stubborn person? Right away. I don't think I'd be very happy. Neither were these guys. They were pretty angry with Stephen. And remember, he was in jail. So, what do you think is going to happen next? So the religious leaders, the guys who were in charge of jailing Stephen and keeping him there, they were pretty angry. And they, they let it show. Stephen wasn't a dumb guy. He was in charge of a lot of stuff so he could definitely see that they were angry and it was at that time something amazing happened something so cool so that god could kind of help in a way Stephen get unstuck from this situation but not in a way that you would expect i'm going to read this from the bible okay when they heard this they were furious and gnashed their teeth at them at him so that was the leaders um, gnashing their teeth at Stephen. this is chapter 7 that was verse 54 but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Oh my gosh. Oh, my heart. If ugh, My heart is like so happy right now. I love that. Stephen is in a very scary situation um, he was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing following the, the rules the the directions of the disciples and of God he was he was helping people learn about Jesus and you know our hero in jail uh, he was and even when he was in jail he was at peace and he had the face of an angel and what's this one Oops. even through this he told them about Jesus on the cross and still these people were angry. Oh, I would be so frustrated. And Stephen kept going. And I feel like if that was his breaking point, if that was the point where he was going to give up, God gave him such an amazing gift. A vision. A vision of heaven. And just assured Stephen. Gave him hope that, he, that everything is going to be okay. That what's going on is what's supposed to be going on and all is going to be good. So, <clears throat> even though I think that's a beautiful thing, um, the religious leaders didn't necessarily agree with me. They actually literally covered their ears. They did not want to hear it. They did not want to hear it. And they wanted Stephen out, okay? So, brings me to my last can. This, these aren't clouds. Those are stones. They chose the religious leaders because they were so unhappy with Stephen and his story and um, everything that he was doing. They stoned him until he died, which means they threw rocks at him. Um, which, I mean, that is sad. But think about Stephen's life and all of the opportunities and all the people who saw him struggle and keep his faith. And he got to spread so much of the word of Jesus and God. And think about the amazing gift that he got, that beautiful vision when things were so hard. And pretty much right before, he suffered the most. And then he did get to go be with God. That is amazing. So that is truly an amazing story about why we should keep going. 
because God knows the end of the story. Listen, you and I, we might not get a vision. We might not look up to the heaven and literally see God and Jesus at his right hand. But it is so good to know that we do have these little treats or sometimes big treats from God and the Holy Spirit to help get us through. And even if that treat is looking in your Bible and reading about Stephen and what happened to him, I encourage you to do that. There's all kinds of treats like that in your Bible to help get you through. So look for them, and I'm here to help you. Okay guys, we're gonna do a little activity um, with some paper. And I'm not going to tell you what it's gonna be until the end. You're just gonna follow my instructions, we're gonna work together, and then hopefully we have the same thing at the end. So what we need is a square piece of paper. Now, I know that this is church class, not geometry class, but you should know that this is not a square. This is a rectangle. So we're going to make it into a rectangle. Do you know how to do that? You fold one corner over so that it is even. The line is flat up against the top. Okay? And then you make a crease. Like so. Does that make sense? Like that. And then you're going to fold over this part. This flappy part over here. Fold it over and make a crease there. And then you're going to take some scissors and you're going to cut this rectangle off of your square. Okay? Go ahead and do that. Alright, do you have your square? It's actually a rectangle. Did you know all squares are rectangles? They're not all rectangles or squares. Isn't that funny? Okay, anyways. It's not perfect, but neither am I. Now let's go. So, point it like this so that the point's going in at your belly. Got it? I have my instructions over there, but you can't see them. All right, so you're gonna fold one side over, like so. Just like you already, you should probably already have a crease there from when you were making your square if you didn't have a square piece of paper. Okay? So now we have a triangle, so it should look like. You should have folded it, um, I did right to left. But you do however you want. Now you're gonna take the point, it's by my left hand, and you are going to fold it back over mm, about two-thirds of the way, let's say, like so. Okay, so now you have triangle, triangle, big triangle. Do you see that? Is that what your presses look like? Maybe? Okay, this part's a little tricky. You are going to take part of this of the big triangle, and you are going to fold it back. But you want it to go a little bit over this straight line. I apologize, Miss Jessie is not a paper folding professional teacher, but just stick with me, okay? Um, we're gonna fold it a little bit over that line, but not too much. You want it maybe to be about in the middle of your line here. Does that make sense? I'll show you what mine looks like. And don't forget at any point you can press pause to catch up or if Miss Jessie's instructions aren't clear you can rewind or whatever. So I probably should have folded a little bit more down but that is what it looks like. So are you with me? We have kind of this diamond shape which is two big triangles and it has two triangles on either side of the stacked ones. Does it look like this? You can pause it to make sure, don't forget. All right, now what we're gonna do is you wanna place it like this so it's pointing at your belly still, right? And we're going to fold it through the center of the big triangle. So imagine I draw an imaginary line there, imagine, and you're gonna fold it in half like that, okay? So you want to line up the points, and if it's not perfect, you know what, don't worry. Other than Jesus, really, what is perfect? Okay, 
So now we have this. Any guesses what it is? Is it a bonnet? It's not a bonnet. I'm sorry. I wish it was. You guys got a little preview of my accent skills. All right. I'm gonna take this point here. Okay. Theoretically, these two triangles should be even. Like I said, Miss Jessie is not perfect, and that is a okay. What we're gonna do to we're gonna invert it. So here's what I'm. Oh, I know. I got it. All right. So you're going to kind of push it down and see how it makes that little diamond. See it? Sorry, my phone's going off, guys. That's okay. Okay. And when it's smooshed down, you just go ahead and fold it in the smush a little. Okay. Basically make it look like this. I know my instructions aren't great. I'm not as good as God is at giving Steven the vision. Oh, I'm gonna turn that on silent. Somebody else wants to give me a vision. Nope, they just wanna send me a text. All right, here we are. Next, we're gonna, do we have any guesses what it is now? Any guesses? I mean, it's obvious what it is, right? It's, um, some buildings up against a mountain with a little foot hill. Oh, I see so we're like this, and then we're gonna take this flappity part. Ooh, flappity! I gave you a hint, and you're gonna fold it kind of at an angle, like so. You choose the angle, whatever angle makes your heart beat happily. And do the same to the other side. <gasps> oh my goodness! Can you see what it is? So the head looks a little funny because Miss Jessie has no idea what invert means. But hey, we're good. What is that? That is definitely a hat. No, it's not. It's a dove. It's a bird. And even though it looks a little bit like a pigeon, and not a happy little dove. It's a dove, and we did it together, okay? So instructions can sometimes be really tricky. And I bet it was even harder for you because you couldn't see the picture that I saw. And I didn't have necessarily all the skills, but I kept trying. I stuck it out. I had to get some determination to keep going. And I knew that if I kept going, I would have something that looks like a bird. And I know that this is a great job. I know that this is the best origami dove that I was gonna make today. So, like I said, keep going, stick it out. Let me see, oops, sorry, Bible. Keep going, because God knows the end of the story. So, your origami bird isn't God's story, but it's a good way to compare it. And let's talk about determination. Deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Even if you have no idea what inverting paper means, even if you get a little bit confused and if you realize things look uneven, let's just decide that it's worth it to finish what you started because even if it's perfect, not perfect, you stuck it out. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, guys. So we're going to do our memory verses, and then we're going to do some prayers, okay? I'm going to grab the memory verses. I'll be right back. Okay, memory verse time. This is my favorite part. This is this is my favorite part of teaching um, in Kidopolis is memory verses. I love seeing you guys learn your memory verses, even if it's a long one, kind of like the one for um, the big kids this week. It is it's the coolest part of my, my job back there. I love to see you make connections with um, your verse when you read the verse and you tell me how you can use it in your life. That is so cool. So please always never be shy to send me a message or whatever you want. Let me know how you're doing with your memorizing. Don't forget there's always treats. Even if we're not meeting on Sunday in person, there will always be a treat for you brought to you by Miss Jessie um, for memorizing your Bible verse, okay? So... We have um, two sets of memory verses this, this month. We have what I'm calling the Versity, which is the big kids. 
So if you were like basically kindergarten and up, um, this verse is for you, all right? This verse is for you to memorize. If you, if it's a little tricky for you, you think this is a lot of words, no problem. You can go ahead and memorize the other verse that I'm about to show you. I'm calling it the junior versity, the JV. Okay, <clears throat> so for versity, we have from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Let us not become tired of doing good. You ever gotten tired of doing good? Think about Stephen. <laughs> Think about how many times he had the opportunity to feel tired of doing good. What about Jesus when he was doing all of his things and then he had people who were calling him evil, basically, for doing good things? Do you think he got tired of doing good? There are a lot of good people who have lots of opportunities to grow tired of doing good, but they chose to stick it out and keep going. And I believe in you. I bet you can do it. And you have this verse to put in your brain and your hearts to help you along. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Let's bring it back to Stephen. Let's think about, did he gather a crop when he was in jail? Did he go out and pick some corn, maybe some blueberries or strawberries, put them in a basket to feed people? Because, you know, he was supposed to be taking care of people. Is that, that's not the crop they're talking about. Ugh, no. Let's think about what crop Stephen gathered. He, um, he had the crop of that beautiful vision from God about heaven. And he didn't give up. He kept going through, you know, being people making up lies about him when he had an opportunity to kind of backtrack on his plan all the way up until, you know, the very end when he was about to get stoned. I bet you there was lots of times that he was going to give up. But at the right time, you gather a crop if you don't give up. He didn't give up. Where did he end up? In heaven with God. And he so knew it because he got a good, good crop of goodness. All right. Next verse. This is for my JV. My little, littler kids. Or anybody who's, you know what? You know what, if you're a grown up and you looked at that last verse and you're like, man, I really want to memorize these verses with these kids, but that was a lot of words, Jess. That was a lot of words. This verse is for you. Anybody who thinks that's too many words, or if you're kind of like new to memorizing verses, give this one a try. Anybody maybe younger than kindergarten, go ahead. So this verse, from 2 Thessalonians, written to the people of Thessalonica, one of my favorite words, um, I guess one of my favorite nouns, chapter 3, verse 13, as for you brothers, do not grow tired in doing good, as for you brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. So they're talking about their little literal brothers who have the same mom and dad. No, they're talking about their brothers of faith. Are they talking about literally getting tired so that they need to take a nap? Like, man, I've been working really hard on cleaning my room. I better not get tired. It's okay if your body's tired. It's okay to take a nap. What they're saying is don't get tired. Don't get sick of doing it. Keep going. Stick it out. Finish what you started. Have some determination. And like I said, you have these verses. Like I said, we have 2 Thessalonians 3, 13, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. We have these verses to when we're feeling tired, when we're feeling uninspired, when we're feeling stuck. We have these verses that we can look back on to help us through. We have so many great examples in the Bible to keep us going. Um, and don't forget about the people around you, the people who love you, people in your church, your school, your friends, your family, who
who can help you, who can pray for you, do all kinds of stuff to help you get unstuck. So speaking of which, I have some prayer requ requests from some kiddos at church. Um, I want people to <laughs> pray that my grandma comes. Can you pray for me? I have a whole day. There's nothing good. And Mama, yeah. Did I have a hard day with nothing good? Yep, she did. <laughs> I want to eat go fish shine my friends. I have a prayer request. I would like you to pray that coronavirus ends soon so we can all see our friends and have fun together. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those smiling faces from your friends. I hope that you um, pray for them throughout your week. I have another prayer request. We have the cat walleters, the cads. Their hearts are a little bit heavy this week, um, and they could use your prayers to lift them. But, you know, they also want to share that they're finding the goodness of God um, during this time. So prayer and praise for the cats. Um, my, I have just my praise report that I shared with you guys earlier that things for me personally are looking up so much better. I was just so gloomy last week, but I'm feeling a lot better this week. We had some exciting things happen for our family this week, and we're just really looking forward to spring and summer. Um, so for any time during this weird video stuff that Miss Jessie has to teach to you through a phone, go ahead and send the prayer request in any way that you can. You just let me know. Love to share as much or as little as you want, but I for sure absolutely want to pray with you, okay? So um, let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for just, oh, so many good things. Um, thank you for whatever prayers you sent that were sent your way, just answering them and lifting my heart and my spirits. Thank you for, we. I want to thank you personally for what a great church community that we have that... Um, when I've been struggling, that they've always been there for me. And I hope that the kiddos that I'm teaching can see that and feel it in their hearts, um, just the joy and the goodness that uh, a good church family can bring. Um, I pray for our friends who are having a hard time. I pray that, oh, that we are, that this memory is just that, a memory very soon. Um, I pray for a great spring and a great summer and that everybody stays healthy. And I pray that you help us all stick it out when things seem, oh, just too hard. And Lord, again, I just wanna praise you so much um, for the amazing words that you've given us in your Bible. Like I said, that, that verse from Psalms earlier and then um, the story of Stephen and the amazing gift that he had in the vision of God. Lord, I thank you so much for those. Those are so inspiring and so beautiful. Thank you for all the words that you've given us um, to teach us and to teach others. We love you. Pray in all your son's name. Amen. Sorry, we have kiddos pl playing outside. If you've heard anything, don't be alarmed. They're just very enthusiastic about the ants on the deck. Um, before I go, I want to give a big thank you to the people who are editing this video. Miss um, Jessie and Jacob, we just send them a bunch of... Uh, clips and they put it all together and they do an awesome job so thank you so much i think it's charlie who does most of it so charlie thank you so much for all you do um and anybody else who i'm missing let me know and i'll be sure to give you the proper credit don't forget to watch the so and so show it might be edited in here who knows charlie is that do you do that um either way you'll get links from jacob um and an email don't forget to send me emails i love hearing from you guys we are i'm on Facebook as Jesse Christian with an EY. I'm on the discussion board. Um, and then Jacob checks the Kidopolis email, kidopolis at lcc.org. And he lets me know if there's anything that we need to talk about here or just in general. Okay? So have a great week. Um, be like Steven. Do your memory verses. Enjoy your sad little turkey dove. Um, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, God. And... Have a great week.